Okay guys, where we left off, we were putting a thermostat in a cabriolet and I made a fatal mistake of grabbing a bolt that was too long while I was trying to film and I had the car down where I really couldn't see and I got the longer bolt than I should have grabbed, ran it up with the impact, which I should have stopped and this little piece broke off. And that is part of the water pump housing that attaches the thermostat. So I need to replace the water pump housing on this car, which is down there underneath the AC compressor. And the whole thing with the water pump housing and new water pump is like 30 bucks. And I'm not sure it's ever been replaced in this car. So it's probably not a bad thing to do that. And it's cheap. But the timing bell has to come off. Not sure when the last time a timing bell was done on this car. Not sure if that tensioner is original. Then I got to looking in these A1 cars, Rabbits, Scirocco's, Cabriolets, the motor mount, there's a motor mount on this side of the engine. There's one in the front, there's one in the trans. It's not the best setup. But I got to looking pretty sure that thing's never been replaced because you have to take this bracket off and press this rubber bushing out and looking at it it has sagged so far it has started to wear away the timing belt cover so essentially I just opened a big can of worms and then I got to looking at all this filth in here so I might as well clean that up might as well replace the valve cover gasket so you see where this is going. So thus far, I have that valve cover gasket, timing belt tensioner, timing belt. I do not have the water pump housing and the timing belt insert. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to clean up this muck so I don't get quite so filthy doing all this. And to do that, we're going to use the Sure Shot, sure to make the bodies drop. And we'll get that all cleaned up first so we don't get so filthy. In the sure shot, I just have mineral spirits. It's going to try to kind of wet everything down and just wipe it off just to make it not so filthy. Oh, yeah. So we'll bring you back when this is a little more presentable. So that looks a little better. First order of business, we will get these remaining V-belts off here. And when they say that they don't make things like they used to, sometimes it's not so bad because the V-belt setup on these is not a lot of fun. The alternator not so bad. It's driven here. This big big belt drives the water pump AC compressor which in turn drives the alternator. These co later cars actually had this little uh, rack and pinion setup that allowed you to adjust the belt. 22 millimeter rack here that you can turn and get that belt off. So that's not so bad. There's a hex pivot that typically you never have to loosen it's down here. But we will have to go in through here and get one to get the bracket off that all this sits on in front of the water pump when we get there, but I digress. So the AC compressor is way down in here. Some of the cars had a, a through bolt and uh, set up like this that would allow you to pull the compressor up. This car has the uh, same, if you can even see it down there, 
has the same rack and pinion setup like the alternator I just showed you. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of room in there. That's where this wrench came to be invented back in the 90s when they came out with um, stubby wrenches. They stopped at 19. I ran into this problem and turned my favorite 22 into a really short 22 and it's been like that ever since. Matter of fact, I originally made it a little bit longer. It was too long. I had to take even more out of it. So we will utilize these tools to get down in there and get these belts off of this thing. Okay, so I kind of gave up last night. I got this cleaned out, but then I was having lights die and batteries die and microphones, so I kind of gave up till the day. And it looks like my neighbor got a new pressure washer, so now we get to hear that. Sorry for the background noise, and apparently he's going to wear it out on the first day. So I got the alternator belt off. There's a pivot bolt for the AC compressor right down in here. And about the only way to get that is old school Allen wrench. That's an 8 millimeter. So I got that one loose. There's one over on the other side, which reminded me when I was doing this that I had actually purchased this special flex socket way back in the day. It's an 8 millimeter flex. That's a snap on, so that thing's probably $100 right now. I went to use it and realized. There's no bolt. It's gone. So we will have to I don't know if you can see that or not. Should be a bolt right there. We'll uh, have to find one of those. When we go back together. So for right now, I'm going to work on getting this belt off. We'll have to go underneath and take pulleys off and all that. So we'll go ahead and do that and get set up. So underneath the car, this is the water pump pulley. Maybe a good time to try to break these loose while this belt's still kind of tight. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Might be enough room to get an impact, but let me try this. The pry bar, a little more tension on the belt. So they make a triangular shaped tool. It's like a big triangular wrench that's designed to hold those things, which of course I don't have. Because you could usually, they were usually never that tight, and you could usually bump them with the impact and get them out. I don't remember the uh, Older A1 cars having all this plastic crap in the way, so you have a little better access. In the A2 cars, this was made different. And I think this hung down lower, this was cut out more. So you had a little better access. Let me try this one. There's another way to get that belt off. There are also Allens that hold the crank pulley on. Let's see if that will come off. Okay, let's get the big guns out. Okay, so this is turning into one of those projects. I applied some penetrating blaster, applied the torch, and was able to get all of them but one out of each location. So the one in the water pump is rounded out, and the one in here in the crank pulley is rounded out. Um, I've got two things I'm going to try here. First of all, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat again.
mixed them both again and we can't get the crank one out we can just drill it out I could drill out the water pump one and I, I was thinking I could take it off with the water pump but I can't get the timing cover off without getting this pulley off so what we're gonna try here on the water pump we're gonna try the air chisel sometimes you can get a get a little bite on there and just bark on it and it'll turn all right hold yours here goes It didn't look too successful. Get okay, back around where we can see it. Let's try whaling on this again. Leave it turned. Of course, now I've deformed that thing so much, nothing's going to go in there. Now let's bark on it a little bit more. Obviously, we'll have to replace this bolt. But that's one way to get things out. And the Germans love these Allen bolts. I guess now they're Torx. Pulley should slide off there. Now we were looking at the crank. A little desperate here too. I can drill that. I just don't want to. I have a large screw extractor. I normally don't have much luck with these, but I figured I'd give it a shot in this situation. One of those big square ones might work better. Now since the engine wants to turn, I've been doing. spin and I kind of suspected that's what was going to happen. All right, I'm going to get the drill and we'll just drill the head off that thing. Could try a left-handed drill bit, but who cares at this point. I just found what looked to be the newest and sharpest one I had. again. There we go. remember that bolt might hold that pulley on so let me see if I can not screw that thing up and get the impact on there I may actually have to drill a little bit more and get some more of that head off there although the other one came off So that's actually pulling 
the timing belt sprocket off. That usually never happens. That is odd. Okay, well, doesn't really matter at this point. Now I should be able to get this belt off. There's the AC water pump belt. And then we'll go up top and start pulling the covers off for the rest of the timing belt and turn it around and get our timing marks lined up. Okay, so we have a timing mark. Miraculously, we somehow lined up exactly with it but I, that may be 180 degrees out. So there's one down there somewhere too, but this car actually still has a distributor. So we will look at so number one, it's right there. So we are pretty much lined up on top dead center, number one cylinder. I'm probably gonna back it up just a hair. No, I probably won't even be able to. That bolt loose. But I don't know if you can see that. There's an OT there. And then right there. cam pulley and actually on these cars down there's a little arrow on the timing cover and there's a notch in the pulley so we are right on so what I will do is we can go ahead and pull that crank pulley off because it looks like the timing belt pulley is going to come off with it. So at least we won't screw anything up. We'll be pretty much number one top dead center where we want to be when we go back together. Okay, back under the car. I was able to knock what was left of this bolt through and get the uh, crankshaft pulley off. And then look at this. That was that seized bolt we had to drill out or drill the head off of. So there is a five millimeter Allen right here. And you, you saw where that was, right? Need some magnetic lights or something. So there's one there and there's one through this little hole right here. A lot of times you take one of these cars apart and one or two, usually one of these is missing. Okay. There should be a nut right there, which is gone. There's always something missing. And there's that. motor mounts like half eating it. Yeah, we can see where it was rubbing on it. That's how sagged it is. Okay, we're getting closer. I got the alternator out of the way. I pulled off the dipstick tube and dipstick, which go right there because otherwise I know I'd break it. I did discover 
some hidden treasures. We got a bolt down in there, which I thought the magnet would get out. And hiding way down in there. There's another bolt. That might be our AC compressor bolt. And I thought I could just pull them out and make some little magic show here. That oh, baby's wedged in there big time. Okay, well, well, we'll get to them in a minute. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with a car that was never designed to have air conditioning and all that stuff way back in the day, they kind of, in power steering, there's a lot of stuff in the way. But I was able to get the AC compressor kind of out of the way. I had to loosen these from below. We got to one of the buried bolts. The other one's still all the way underneath the water pump. So to get this bracket off, there's a bolt that goes through right here. And there are two bolts that I think they go all the way through the water pump into the block. And then this bracket should come off and then we'll see the water pump housing. I don't know that I really want to try to film this because you're just going to see my elbows. So let me work on those and get this thing out of here.